yeah. and rush and load loads of cars. Yeah, yeah. And go so you can go bush to bush. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Cool. So we've got a little bit of a climb straight up onto the hill. It's not raining, which is awesome. We're out with Norman Mulvaney of Irish Safaris, and uh, this is our first morning out in Ireland. And uh, yeah, that's warmed us up anyway. It's just breaking light, and as you can see it's quite misty. Um, so we're going to get ourselves into a position, uh, trying to spot this big hill. It's like a big crescent, and uh, yeah, really exciting. Takes me back to the years I was in Kintyre chasing these deer and uh, Japanese seeker. Fingers crossed we get to see some and share the action with you guys. still settled. If we can go over to the grassy knoll, we've got a full view of him then I'm going to get a distance. we at the broadside and hopefully we can make it happen. But the other claws in very, 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 very rapidly here. Okay. 11 clicks, 250. Try and get a closer again if you want. Are they running? Hmm? Are they running? They're starting to go up continually. They're just out in the hollow now, but they're 249 metres. But if we get 200, if we can, but like there's a risk of bumping everything. <coughs> There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up there. Now you're showing an uphill, so I'd be alone for 200, 120 meters, 115 meters, right? <coughs> Stood on a rock. Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah. Can't get a focus from him. It shouldn't focus. Anything I see is a dog. Which is one, two. And, it's, and he's gone now. No, no, he's still there. He hasn't moved. No, no, the mist. Oh. Yeah, it's gone in the fog. Press this thing again. Well, you keep seeing it. The fog comes in, and we're trying to keep get closer and closer. But uh, tricky one. Well, our first morning out on the hill in uh, the Wicklow Mountains, my mate Norman. And uh, since we got out of the car down on the fields, it's been, it's been an uphill slog, quite literally. Um, Norman's pulled us up here. Um, first, as soon as we got here, um, breaking light, we, was, we could just see white sheep. Uh, we dropped down below them, and as it broke light, we could, the first thing we could see any sign of deer was their white backsides, wasn't yeah. it? The rumps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was about 300 metres away, yeah. uh, and we had to use the um, the 
contour of the ground to try and get in there but they were just feeding and they were feeding much quicker than we could um, move um, and then we spotted was it two or three stags nearer to us wasn't yeah. it and um, with another five four drop and it? then the fog started coming in this one you've got to be honest it was reasonably clear when we got here and the fog's come in and then we used the fog to our effect and uh, we closed it down to about 200 meters and we got up on the stick several times for a shot and then the, the only time I had visibility on a good stag was um, it was backside was looking towards me and he was just intermittent um, visibility uh, it doesn't matter what optics you've got um, when it's foggy you know what I mean and uh, anyway the, we, we gained some ground on them then and then we just got to where we are and there's fogs come in and we can't find them and we think they've gone and we don't think we've actually scared them we think they've just carried on feeding with their heads into the wind and uh, but what a challenge but what a great morning for us that's yeah, it's been blown, tough. The, blown the cobwebs off me <laughs> it's been tough I mean, I mean like we're almost saying we used every possible contour on the hill just to get into the distance yeah into the gorse and up and down through the crags and into little barns and uh, yeah. which was a surprise for me because I thought we were in forestry <laughs> <laughs> I came out with all my gear on, and Norman goes, "You need to take at least three layers off you. You look like an onion." <laughs> so I was just stood there in my pants. He says, "No, I'd put a couple more layers." Yeah, you weren't going to bother me either. <laughs> but uh, whoa, it's a flipping. I've had, uh, I've been crippled with gout um, for about two or three weeks, and it's just passed. Um, and I was like, "Oh, do I go? Do I go?" But I'm glad I came, and it's hurt me to come up, but. Uh, it's, uh, I'm feeling good now. And yeah, I'm glad did. I did, and it's just uh, that yeah, way well, you're it, really pushing yourself. It was a good stock. It's not like running. It's it's just continued. Any I can just compare it with the uh, with Austria really, where yeah. you've just got to keep going, got to keep going, and especially when you've seen a glimpse of the animals, you can't just go well. Let's just stop and get sort of kit out. You've got to keep going, keep going, to get yourself into a position. But um, hopefully, uh, we're using this. We've invested in a trigger cam, um, and. Um, Hopefully we've got that footage. I don't know if you got it on camera, did you, Dan? That seeker. Yeah, you get it a bit. Yeah, it. but um, hopefully we're going to come up back up tomorrow morning. We've got a different plan tonight, I think. Yeah. And um, we're um, we're going to come back up here tomorrow and um, do something similar. But, uh, That's always the way of seeker. It's just fleeting plants, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? I was just, but I was surprised when it did clear for a while. How many was actually up here? Yeah, there were a lot of stags <laughs> up there. But, I mean, that's that's Ireland. That's yeah. That's the Wicklow Hills. And we're second week in November and your rut's virtually... It's over, yeah. It's gone, yeah? yeah. And the stags have come back together. The stags have after you into their bachelor herds again. Yeah. It's still not, it's just still not cold enough. No, no. This time last year we were seeing 50 and 60 at a time up here. Yeah. But it's oh. still, for, I mean, I've just travelled back, I've travelled back, travelled here from England yesterday yeah. and we've been having sort of like 10, 15 degrees. It's been ridiculously mild. Yeah, I know that we were stopping. Falibut rut's been rubbish really right. in, in Oxfordshire for me because we just haven't had any cold temperatures to really get them um, so anyway but anyway so it's it'll we may hear the occasional whistle but we uh, we I'm just look. I'm just continually looking just in case, just in case one comes over, over the hill but um, no so really interesting but uh, that was our morning that was like an hour and a half full on not jogging but walking as quickly as we could across this really uh, tough terrain of sort of like boggy ground and grass tops and, and everything. Five kilometres for five, five, kilometers for a, five, five kilometers for a fat lad from Staffordshire. Cliffy <laughs> <laughs> and egg. <laughs> Tell me about these Irish breakfasts, Norman. What are they like? <laughs> it's clearing now, look Dan, can you just pan out look at that? Get a bit more of an idea. Yeah. It's very much, it's very much. Um, Irish like, break is lovely. Like Perthshire for me. Yeah, I don't know the English one. Because of the uh, over the back, so you got back steam. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. We don't get them here in Irish. Don't you? No, we don't do it. Oh, well, we can, we can review the. But like a pork sausage. We can your bacon. You review the breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Find the water. I think. I meet every morning. This stage. But uh, yeah, it's when you come and do these trips, um, and we put films up, we get a kind of quite a few questions about it. People thinking about doing this hunt. Um, we've bought a carload a kit but when you do this you really have to go light don't you Absolutely. Thin, thin layers um, I've basically got a shirt a little G loft and this um, uh, dry leaf um, um, 
jacket of Merkel and you've got a very lightweight Arkina jacket yeah. on and trousers. Yeah, with the problem and, directive. Um, yeah, you can wear too much. You, you know, this morning Dan said, are you putting your thermals on? Well, I haven't worn thermals for probably two years. But uh, no, I didn't. I just got these trousers on. And, uh, yeah. Right then, Norman. Take me home or miss, take me home or leave me forever. What <laughs> movie was that off? <laughs> or was that off? Ah, Top Gun. That's it. I do like it on waterbike. <laughs> That's it. So it's our first uh, evening since we've got here. We've been out this morning and beaten by the fog. It's cleared up and it's actually just poured with rain for about an hour and now it's cleared up so we've got a, probably a couple of hours before it's dark and um, Norman knows where there's a, a reasonable stag he thinks so we're going to get into a position and we'll hope we're in the forestry now not in the open hill and try and uh, wait from there and see if anything comes out so uh, come and join us. So we're in the middle of nowhere in the Wicklow Mountains, it's just breaking light. We're walking up a little path that's got gorse either side of it, so you're like in a little valley that's two, three metres wide. And I hear something behind me, and I nearly just jumped out of my skin. There's a white pony, it was about two metres behind me. It may even be a ghost of a white pony as it disappears into the fog. <laughs> it's going to shit Norman up so. Well, um, we've been out for half an hour. We've walked out onto the hill we were on yesterday morning. And uh, there was fog in the village. Uh, there was fog on the way up, but we had a, a bit of a hope that the higher we got, it kind of disappeared. And we actually arrived here and it was a little bit clear, but now it's come back in like a blanket and we've probably got 50 meter, 40, 50 meters yeah. visibility. So unfortunately, that's this morning's hunt done for Seeker because uh, they'll be back in before the fog clears. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating, um, but understandable. That's what the weather's like. It's not particularly cold. Um, no, the forecast was wrong. Yeah, forecast was wrong. It's, so it's reasonably mild. And that's probably the reason we've got the fog that the uh, air and ground temperature is uh, completely different uh, and then you get this blanket of thick cloud fog mm. coming in and you can't do anything with it. I but think it's the first morning of the season that I've actually said that we should have actually stayed in bed, believe it or not. It's <laughs> the first go. morning I've said it, even over just, rainy weather. Just our luck, but uh, anyway, we've got a few more days, but um, that's, uh, we understand it, mate. So uh, we'll get ourselves back for a nice coffee. Oh, I could drink a coffee. I or a could. nice warm dover. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going in your bed again. And I bet if Willie was listening to this <laughs> one, he'd gone in and say, what the hell are you doing going back to the bed at this hour of the morning for? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, over and out from Team Service UK and Irish Safaris. It wasn't for the will, <laughs> it was for the fog. Yeah. Uh -huh.
wait till it turns a bit. Just wait till it turns broadside. Yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. It's going, I would say, possibly maybe into the fourth or fifth rib. That's perfect. I put it on, I put it on the back of my head. that's all I could see. When I was here, I could just see it, so I sent it all behind. No, I've seen the reaction, it's okay. <coughs> you, caught it in, it. you caught it into the ribs here, it had to come in over here. Yeah, it's the only shot I had. Yeah. Bloody hell. Middle of the day. We've been out in the middle of the night, we've been out, we've been five hours before it got light, we've been in fog, we've been in rain, and now, midday, on a Sunday. 11.42. Yeah, 11.42. It worked. And they're out feeding, because it's so lovely. It's not cold, it's nice and still in here. But this ride that we've been on is just so full of signs of Seeker, isn't it? You can see the bark stripping, which is very typical of Seeker. You see some scrapes on the floor from the stags that are perhaps a, a little bit old now, but... Uh, and you just managed to see that backside. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Awesome. I worked out that one and it's still early, so we've still got see. hours of hunting left. Oh, but we just let it settle down. It didn't go too far. It looks like it was pretty hard hit, so. Did it? Did it not just stick it on the deck? No, no. It's just gone on a little bit of a dead run, but not far. It shouldn't be gone that far, I don't think. <laughs> it's not as big as a fallow, Dave. <laughs> they just floored it with a fallow deer. Hmm. They're hardy, aren't they? They're tough animals. They're hardy. Well, I can see the shot because obviously they can watch like a big like broadside shot. Push your leg down. I've I got that. And then she angled, so you cut her. You, you, I yeah, thought you, to put it just behind the shot. Yeah, you cut her lovely. I mean, your shoe's like a 180 grain, isn't it? Or 160. 178 grain ELDX. Only bullet. That's a good bullet, though. Yeah, yeah, they are. That's a good bullet. It's a. Um, it's a you see, that's how fast it can happen on these. And how in in um, in Ireland? How are they with the uh, going to a non-toxic bullet, going to non-lead? It's slowly, it's slowly, slowly starting to cut. I've been using it for two years now, yep. on the outfitter, and yep. never had an issue. Now uh, I know guys up in Scotland, two weeks ago on the Hines, and they had a really bad issue, but I've never had an issue with them. No, no. Two well, years, I, and we're hitting them hard, and they're going down. I was using the GMX when they first yeah. started bringing them out, and it was. Uh, on a road deer, if you didn't quite get it right, the exit hole was brutal. Mm. But the new CX bullet, which I've been using all yeah. summer, and up until last week, mm -hmm. I just changed back to lead for this bloody sea cat. I remember, uh, I remember speaking to Andrew Venables at the, um, at the Distalker show. Yeah. And Andrew knows his stuff. Yeah. And Andrew said, if you're using like a non lead, always go for your second or into your third rib. That's going to be your kill shot. Yeah, yeah. I think he's spot on. So, yeah, yeah. on those, you can just put it right on the shoulder if we can every time yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just going to smash everything into well, the scapula I, i'm hoping when we get there it's gone in behind the back shoulder yeah. and, and come out the front yeah what was it it's only about 40 meters on it yeah. no, uh, okay. she was actually actually 73 meters Beautiful spaces. 
I don't get to shoot many of these. I don't get to shoot many of these. What do we think? This is a yearling hind. Yeah, this is last year. Yearling hind. This is last Service year. Service Nippon, Japanese seeker. In the Wicklow Mountain. The forests of the Wicklow Mountain. So we just thought, that's, I, Norman said, I'll come pick you up middle of the day. I'm like, oh, what's he up to now? <laughs> and, uh, it worked, didn't it? it we worked. saw a few out yesterday when we were taking the photographs yeah. and everything, but... Uh, and my son, though, it's two weeks ago as well, so... Good eating, that one. It's just a different option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone hunts in yeah. early morning. Yeah, for yeah. Last yeah. Night, so. gone in there, and yeah. that was my shot. That's a perfect shot. That was my shot, and he's come out of there, that was me. Yeah, probably in through the... Yeah. Been through the Ford Rib, maybe. Yeah. And then it's after ages and off And it, well, it's around 20 metres, hasn't it? So yeah. I'm using um, uh, the Hornady, <coughs> the Hornady, 178 grain LDX bullet, which is, um, for your bigger game and your tougher game, it's a, it's an awesome round, it really is. And um, yeah, these, these are very strong animals, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So you can't underestimate uh, this species. And, um, well, awesome, mate. Chuffed to bits with that. Thank you, you so much. You've been groggy this we've morning. Had a, yeah, you have been well last we've had night. A, we've had a tough three days yeah. of uh, where well, we've been cancelled twice with fog. We had horrendous rains and gales this morning, so we didn't get out. Um, me and Dan have got have contact, contracted contacted um, some kind of Irish flu bug. And oh, we, feel, <laughs> we feel like absolute yeah, what's saying? But we've come out this afternoon. It's a beautiful little walk up through the woodlands, and you could see all the. So I saw a little red squirrel, didn't we, as we were going, yeah. that was gorgeous. And you were saying, Norman, the red squirrel. Red squirrel is probably non-existent. You've got greys here. We've got a lot of grey squirrels here. And How the hell have they? They must have come over on a canoe or something. <laughs> I don't know, but you, you very seldom see red squirrels anymore, yeah. which is a shame. I know, I've, I've, I've seen them in Scotland, the, yeah. but no, nowhere else. Um, yeah. That's not true. I think I saw one in the New Forest when I was a kid on Novelty. Mm -hmm. That's a long time ago. But Years ago, but anyway, thank you so much for this. We'll get to it, and it's not even midday, probably. So, this one feel dressed. Um, get this one out, all back in the beach, and then we're going to go on again. Oh, hey, and we go again. <laughs> awesome, thanks, mate. We appreciate that. Right. Well, we've just come into the forest. It's late afternoon, it's actually 20 past three. It's dark about half five, quarter to six. And um, these forests are massive. And um, we're after one particular stag, Norman tells me. We've been there twice already, so it's third time lucky. But these stags aren't moving until very, very last light. So um, if we get him, it'll be uh, a miracle. It won't be a miracle, it'll be the fact that we re we deserve to have it after the efforts we put in. Yeah. <coughs> and um, yeah, so we're going to drive them to a position, then we stalk along some forestry roads. And it's a sitting and waiting game. So we've generally been stalking in the morning and sitting for this big lad um, during the um, during the afternoons. And this morning we did a little stalk late morning, and I got a yearling hind. Um, which was great, so at least we've yeah. shot something. We've got a film to show you guys. Uh, it's an incredible place, Dan, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it truly is the Emerald Isle. It's so green and just unbelievable, really. If you could see the view we've got at the moment, it's stunning. Right, back to the curve, yeah? Yeah. Come back from the curve this way. Yeah. And there's plenty of back from the curve with their standing. On this edge of the cliff, yeah, you're over the logging road. Literally, I mean, go on now. So, we've just been taking some photographs and films on the top of an hill, and uh, Norman came to join us. And while we were chatting, we looked down, and uh, he was looking at a clear fell about 600 metres below us, and uh, there's a big stag out in the middle of the clear fell. So uh, we're driving as quick as we dare through the forestry to get down in that area to then stalk into him. So uh, he doesn't think he's going to stop out long. He looks like he's out and about with his head down, 
um, but uh, we'll go and have a look anyway. So I uh, wasn't quite expecting the excitement we've had this quickly in the afternoon. Um, it's only half past three and uh, it isn't dark till half five, quarter to six. So uh, anyway, off we go. Stay with us, stay, stay tuned. So we're going to go and get ourselves in a position where we can just wait for the light to drop a bit and hopefully I'll get back and be a bit more active. So uh, it's, it's our best chance. So uh, keep our fingers crossed. Give it a go, see what happens. Yeah. Wind, wind's okay at the moment. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, really important. These are uh, these are very elusive deer. Seek the hardest one for uh, for us to, to stalk. I think in the uh, in the British Isles and Ireland. So. Uh, well, uh, it's a challenge we'll rise to, and let's see if we uh, we can get one. I'm a bit heavier than Norman. <laughs> well, we've snugged down into a position in this clear fell. Something I understand because that's what I get when I'm guiding. And poor old Norman's pulling his hair out. I've got in here. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulled all his hair out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I mean, das ist Jagd, the Germans say, that is hunting. And uh, yeah, tough gig and frustrated, and it's bloody cold as well. It really is. I'm glad I've got a good warm coat on, but uh, it's. Uh, a challenge and that's why we're here because we call it the black ghost and that's what it is and he just drifts in drifts out we don't know if he's laid down in this clear fell because there's some big hollows and tracks where the uh, forestry equipment's been through it but uh, we're virtually uh, done and uh, we've seen nothing so uh, tomorrow will be another day and we'll see what happens but uh, i think we've got rain tomorrow so fog this morning <laughs> we are challenged by the elements in ireland but uh, we're loving every minute of it and it's great to be here and uh, get to talk and share stories about this wonderful animal, the Japanese seeker. So that was our final outing in the Wicklow Mountains. We've had an awesome time and we haven't had the success we'd perhaps hoped. And the conversation I had with um, uh, Norman on the way over here, we were on the phone, and uh, I said, there's not many good films on seeker. We'd really like to make a nice film about it. And we realise now it's <laughs> it's not called the Black Ghost or anything. I mean, the stag we're after is out now below us, but we just oh, we just haven't got the optics to shoot it or film it. You know no. what I mean? It's it's come out really at last knockings. The roots over. They're not as active as the. No, he's out there and out feeding. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> just uh, to disappointed. See. But hopefully, Norman, you'll have us back. We consider it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we really appreciate yeah, it. It's your been efforts. tricky with the weather. The weather's yeah. been the weather has been very much against us. Um, yeah. 
We have some action on camera, which is nice, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. We didn't no, get a stag. No, no, never we're, mind. We're just out done with the weather. The Wicklow stag um, is still there for me. Well, he, well, <laughs> well like, he's, he's out there now. He's out there now. He's anyway. just out of shooting like you. Without that, we'll get ourselves back to the ferry and get ourselves back to England and then off to Luxembourg for driven boar shooting. What a terrible job. So we've done. bloody lucky, isn't he? <laughs> and there's me up again tomorrow morning, every other morning, doing this crap. <laughs>